In this lesson, we're going to look at the crypto module in Node.js and how you can use it to encrypt some data and also to decrypt it at a later point. But before we do that, let's have a look at how we can use the crypto module to generate hashes. So a hash, if you've not come across that term before, at least with regards to cryptography, is an encrypted version of some plain text. However, the algorithms that are used to create a hash only work in one direction. In other words, you can't actually decrypt a hash. So whilst that doesn't sound super useful, it does enable you to create secure passwords. The only way to work out whether the password is actually right is to run the same plain text again through the same hashing algorithm and see if the hash that is generated is the same as what has previously been entered. So let's create a new file called crypto.js and have a look at how those hashing functions work. So here I've just imported the crypto library and called the create hash function on it. And I've passed the algorithm name of MD5 into the create hash function and then chained on two additional functions onto that, which is update, where I've provided some plain text. And then finally the digest function gives us the result of the hash. So if we were to run that file as it is, you'll see in the output that I get a series of letters and numbers, which represents the MD5 hash for the text password. So the MD5 algorithm is quite old and it's been proven that it's quite easy to replicate or rather generate hashes at a really rapid speed, which makes them susceptible to attack because all it requires is a fast computer that can actually generate lots of different hashes from random letters and numbers before a match is found. So you might find MD5 being used in some older systems, but companies sometimes use the MD5 hash just to quickly hide a little bit of data like someone's email address when adding it to a URL. A good example of this would be the Gravatar service, which lots of places use to generate an image for your account profile. And that actually depends on an MD5 hash of your email address to show that image. So as MD5 is weak, there are other algorithms that you can use. So let's have a look at another example with the SHA or SHA-256 algorithm. So let's run crypto.js again. And you can see in the output another sequence of letters and numbers, and that is the SHA-256 hash of the plain text password. And if you compare it to the MD5, you can see it's substantially longer. And just from that, you can see that it will be more secure, requiring more processing power to guess the correct hash. But also you can see we're providing another bit of text when we're creating the hash, which is referred to as the key. So because this key can be anything that we choose, it adds another level of security and complexity to the hashing algorithm, making these SHA-256 keys even harder to break. Of course, you'd probably want to keep your secret key in an environment variable in a similar way that we did a few lessons ago, just so it's not available in your code base anywhere for anyone to see. So that's an example of generating some hashes with Node.js. Let's look at how you would encrypt and decrypt some data. So here we've got an example of a program in Node.js that we could actually use to encrypt some data. And the key thing is here, we're going to use an algorithm which will enable us to decrypt the data afterwards. So there are a few things going on in here. Let's just run through them quickly. First of all, we set the algorithm and password, which is similar to the key that we used in the previous example, except this time the key is actually generated from a crypto function where we pass in the password and also something called a salt, which is used to add some more complexity to the key. And then finally 24, which is the length of the key that we want to generate. And based off of that key and algorithm settings, we can create something called a cipher, which you can think of as the rules that we're going to use to encrypt our data. So once that's set up, we actually set up an event listener as we did in a few lessons ago, listening for the readable event that occurs on that cipher object. And the function inside of that event listener actually generates our encrypted text in a similar way that we did with our hashing functions. And then we set up another event listener for end, which is when the cipher has finished processing the text it's received. And we just log out the value that's stored in the encrypted variable. And finally, just to kick things off, we trigger those events by writing some data to the cipher object and then calling the end event. So let's run our file and see what happens. And you can see in the output that we've got a similar sequence of letters and numbers as we did before. But this will be a representation of the plain text that we've provided, encrypted by our own cipher. 
So let's have a look at a program that we could use to decrypt this encrypted data. So here in our decrypt.js file, we have pretty much exactly the same code, except instead of creating a cipher, we're creating a decipher. But of course we need to ensure that our algorithm, password and salt and key length all match what we had in our encrypt.js file. So let's copy our output from our previous encryption file and we'll use that when we write to the decipher object. So let's run our decrypt.js file and as you can see we get the original text that was encrypted from the encrypt.js file. So as you can see it's not a simple process to encrypt and decrypt data and there are plenty of libraries in the npm repository that will help you to do this but I think it's useful to see how the process works, to have an idea of the algorithms that are available and what's required for creating a secure environment. For example as previously mentioned we don't want to store our passwords or secret keys directly in our code, we would store them in environment variables. In the next lesson we'll look at the zlib module and how it can be used to compress data.